This is the Potomac, a river that's inseparable from the story of America. We visited more than 10 national park sites along the river and in the DC area. We'll show you which ones we loved and, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm saying this, which ones we hated. Oh yeah. So just down the river within eyesight of DC is Fort Washington, which was a turn of the 19th century fort that was built to protect the capital. This fort never saw battle and it was rendered obsolete pretty quickly in, but it is a very fun place to run around and explore. The National Park Service does a great job at this site of upkeeping without being hyper preservation -y. Um, so you really get an opportunity to just go around and explore whatever you want to see. And there is nothing quite like an abandoned fort to provoke games of being kidnapped by ghosts or something like that. So the kids spent a ton of time just making creepy ghost story videos. Just down the river is Piscataway Park, and this is one of those national park sites that it's like, uh, okay. It's there to preserve the view from Mount Vernon, okay. They have some walking trails and they've set up a working colonial era farm, which is sometimes staffed and mostly not. Um, it was fun to walk around and see the animals and to peek inside of a tobacco barn, just get an idea for the importance of farming along the Potomac during the colonial and then revolutionary eras. It was one of those visits that was like, eh, cool idea, but the private sector does it better. Now, this is one that was stolen out of the Mr. Smith Goes to Washington playbook. This is a government-built summer camp, one of the many projects of the New Deal era. The vision was to get city kids out into the fresh air, get them healthful, lovely ideals, but is the Park Service reaching beyond its original mandate? You may be wondering why we are sitting in front of an old carousel building. We're wondering that too. Because this is... The most confusing place we have ever gone. It, yeah, it is a national park. We followed the map. This is supposed to be Clara Barton's house. Yes. This does not seem to be Clara Barton's house. This is like a 1920s kind of era, um, like abandoned theme park with some art museums, some pottery sheds, a playground, no Clara Barton's house, no ranger. Artists. 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 Somebody just went into his pottery yurt. Bah, bah, bah. Over there. I'm so confused. A waste of resources. Sorry. This has got to be the weirdest national park site. I just really, I don't get it. We did finally find our house, but it was closed. This is a citizen's request to turn it over to the Red Cross. Now, I enjoy a lovely garden as much as the next guy. Don't get me wrong. But the garden is just one example of a set of sketchy acquisitions made by the Park Service. One government organization condemned the property because of a nearby river dredging project, and the only way for the owner to avoid the wholesale destruction of her world-renowned aquatic garden was to sell it to the Park Service. Is it just me, or does that scenario scream a little conflict of interest? Now, at Wolf Trap National Park for the Performing Arts, they came by the property a little bit more honestly. It was donated by a lady who wanted to see her farm saved from encroaching suburbia. And so she just donated the whole thing to the National Park Service. That's not how you take a bow, Shy. All th you're supposed to hold hands? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So there's this weird mashup of a nonprofit that decides the shows and the National Park Service that staffs it and manages the grounds. And you gotta wonder, funding is scarce. Is this really the job of the National Park Service? Okay, now I can really get behind this one. The CNO Canal. It was a vision of George Washington himself to see the Potomac utilized for uh, economy and industry. But remember that peaceful Potomac back at the beginning? 
Um, it looks like this above Washington, D.C. So with great success, they skirted around this section and they put in a whole series of canals and locks and towpaths and tunnels. And now that wild section of the Potomac is preserved and we heard there was a great technical trail along the banks. Yeah, that's, like, that yeah. is nuts. How did they get down there? Is something wrong? Oh. Is it raining on you? We bailed on the Billy Goat Trail for this reason. It's raining, cold rain. Probably not a good scenario for hiking on exposed rock. And some days are just like that. We are drenched and what? my makeup running. The one day I wear makeup. Done. We're also annoyed. Ozzy's nice. having brother troubles. As usual. And it's here. This feels a little bit like a waste. But then again, we did see the falls, and that was very beautiful. Lest you forget, there are many things to do in Washington, D.C. that are not national parks. And we did a few, including the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Okay, hey, Ozzy, for the video, can you please tell me what are we looking at over here? Okay, uh, is it going up now? Yes, it's going. Now, ladies and gentlemen, right there, where you see that plane with the R on the back. It's huge. Yes, so that huge plane. That, my friends, is the actual plane that dropped Fat Boy on... Uh, Hiroshima. Uh, it's, uh, Hiroshima. It's Fat Man and Little Boy. That yeah. one dropped Little Boy. Uh, no, that one dropped Fat Man. That one dropped to Little Rappi Boy. would know. So there are two locations of the Smithsonian Air and Space. One is the Stephen Hazy Center, not in downtown. And we actually enjoyed that one so what? much more. No way. It had a space shuttle. It had the Mercury 7. Uh, But what it did not have was the Wright Flyer, the Spirit of St. Louis, or Dick Rutan's Voyager. When we got down to the downtown location, we found that the Voyager was in storage, the Wright plane was out, and the St. Louis was tucked behind a wall because its new home up front was not yet finished. We have some unhappy customers here. It's too far away. Don't worry, we're gonna end on a high note. Francis Scott Key watched the shelling of Baltimore's Fort McHenry, and the fortitude show there inspired him to write the Star Spangled Banner. We had the unbelievable privilege of arriving in time to help take down the overnight flag and raise up the garrison flag. To be able to do that at the spot where the song was written was, I'm not gonna lie, it was a holy experience. And then last but not least, Arlington National Cemetery and Robert E. Lee's house up on the hill overlooking, which for those that have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, stands as a monument to the power of healing in the aftermath of a significant national conflict. Our impressions of national park sites around DC was a mixed bag. We saw plenty of efforts to preserve the memory of what has made America. At the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, we were grateful for the opportunity to witness the honoring of the memory of those who have ensured that, despite our differences, we have an America to preserve.